It is 6 a.m. and we are pouring another concrete slab this morning. Uh, as you can see, uh, things are going very well. We are not using a pump on this one because this is a fairly small slab. It's 1,200 square feet. Not only that, we have access all the way around, so we're able to tailgate it. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, again, it is 6 a.m. We're using Ingram Ready Mix. So far, so good. We have all three trucks lined up here, so this one should go pretty quick. Uh, we have one truck already dumped out, the other one already backed up to the slab, and the third one ready to go. Here, I'll move over here so you can see the third one. My cameraman's lost. There it is. There's the third one. You awake, Daniel? <laughs> Daniel, you awake yet? No. So anyway, this one should go pretty quick. Hopefully we'll be home for lunch. <laughs> Now, while they're pouring concrete, we have some guys going back behind them and making sure the forms are still straight. Because, you know, concrete's pretty heavy. <laughs> uh, I laugh because this video right here, right? Uh, April Fool's video, I talked about how concrete's real light. But anyway, so concrete's very heavy. So when you pour it out, it's gonna push against the forms, especially, you know, because we're gonna vibrate it. So that vibrator will shake everything including the forms, the forms can open up some. So what we do is we put a string line, we stretch it all the way across, and uh, we verify that all the forms are still straight after the concrete have, has been poured. Once we pour the concrete, string lines are verified, the forms are straightened out, then you let it set up, and then now you're gonna end up with a straight uh, slab. We do that obviously before we pour, we make sure the forms are straight, but you have to do it afterwards because it's going to move. It's almost a guarantee. All right, so as you guys can see, they just finished pouring this slab. Uh, that didn't take long. It is 7.13 right now, so it took, a, it took an hour. We got it poured out. So what you want to do is you want to pour that concrete out as thick as possible, which is called slump. You want the slump to be as low as possible, okay? However, I mean, I know you have to get out of the truck and you have to work it. So uh, I like about a five, maybe a six inch slump. That seems to work the best. Now we always pour straight sack cement. So that also helps, you know, in case you want to add a little more water because we have a, a more cement than, than normal. Uh, however, you know, I don't like to go over a, over a six, uh, six inch slump. So anyway, this one's poured out, but as you guys can tell, once we pour it out, they screed it flat, and then they go over with the jitterbug. The jitterbug pushes all the aggregate down. There are some other methods of doing that. There's one called the uh, roller. I don't know what it's called. It's a roller instead of a jitterbug. It's, it's, actually, it's an actual roller. And that's one that I kind of want to try out. Uh, however, you do that and that's going to push the aggregate down bring some of the cream up and then you go back with the bull float right after that the bull float is going to flatten out pretty much the the, the cream that I just brought up with the uh with the uh, jitterbug you're going to flatten it out that's going to leave the cream on the surface and then you let leave it alone do not touch it after that and what's going to happen is you're going to start getting some bleed water to come up that water is water that's in the concrete but Concrete is like a sponge, right? It's pretty heavy, so that it's actually collapsing on itself and push water out. You do not want to trowel it while you have bleed water present because what it's going to do is it's, you're going to trap that bleed water and you're going to have delamination. So do not trowel concrete while you have bleed water on the, on the surface, okay? Again, we're going to bull float it and then we're going to leave it alone, wait for this bleed water to be gone, and we're going to wait for it to 
pretty much where you can walk on it almost. Well, actually, you'll be able to walk on it, and you don't want to be able to sink more than a quarter inch. If you sink more than a quarter inch, it's still too, uh, too wet. So you want to leave it to where you sink about a, an eighth of an inch. Uh, that's kind of what I prefer, especially if it's cool like it is now. An eighth of an inch, and then you can start uh, panning. Of course, before that, we're going to run a bump uh, cutter. And then we put the machine on there with a floating pan. We float the whole slab. That's going to make sure that it's flat. You see, concrete does not dry flat. You have to make it flat, okay? So we're going to come back with a bull float. And then we're going to do the bump cutter. Then we're going to run the uh, pan floats on the trowel machine. And we're going to run two passes minimum, perpendicular to each other. You run one east to west, and then the other one north to south, or vice versa. You just have to make sure that you at least run two passes with the floating pan so that you don't create waves, okay? After that, we pull the machine off with the pan, or we simply pull the pan off the machine, and then you hit it with combination blades, at least, you know, one or two passes, and then we go in with the finishing blades, and that's it. <laughs> I know it sounds simple, but that's pretty much the entire process of uh, finishing concrete. So that's what we're gonna do today, and we're gonna try to show you all of that, and uh, so that you guys can see how a slab is uh, finished. Okay, so if, uh, if you notice, after they run the bull float, you can see in the concrete how there's kind of dips in a way. And now, it, it looks flat because what they did is, you know, the aggregates on the, on the, that's your base, right? And then you have your cream on top. You can tell where the places where it's a little bit shinier, that just means you have a little more cream there, okay? So technically your aggregate's not perfectly flat on the bottom, okay? That's where the floating pans and the bump cutters, all that comes in. Because if you just start troweling and you're not careful with how you trowel, you're going to make dips in the concrete, okay? So anyway, that's, that's uh, one reason that I like to use floating pans and bump cutters. Once we hit it with a floating pan, the floating pan's gonna go in. And what the floating pan's actually gonna do is gonna flatten the aggregate. And the cream, that's why, you know, it's gonna build cream on the surface and then we have to come back with the combination blades and then the finishing blades and then, then we work the, the cream. So you have to work, concrete dries from the bottom up, okay? So you have to kind of work it from the bottom up. You don't wanna, you don't ever wanna go in here and your first pass be with the finishing blades. You will ruin the concrete, okay? Do not ever make your first pass with finishing blades. And if you ever see somebody do that, take them out back and beat them. Whip them, whip them hard, because they should not ever do that. So anyway, that's kind of the process. Just if, if you think about it that way, you work it from the bottom up, you flatten the aggregate first, and then you finish the cream, you're gonna have a nice flat slab. So as you guys can see, the bump cutter works really good for flattening the slab, but also works really good to push the uh, bleed water off the slab. So if you want to get the bleed water off the slab, you can simply use the bump cutter, get it all off, and you get to flatten your slab all at once. You know, in the winter, we use the bump cutter a lot. All right, so what we're doing here is we're flipping the uh, blades. So finishing blades, they have two edges. They're symmetrical, so you run it one way when the blades wear down, you f take and you flip it 180 degrees, you put it back on, and now you have the, the other edge. So pretty much you have, a, you have two blades in one. If you have combination blades, you only get to use one side because those are offset and they're bigger and they, uh, they're just, again, they're not symmetrical. They're bigger on one side. So on this uh, machine, we have finishing blades and they are poly blades. So I've had those blades on there for about 11 months and that's just one side. So we're about to flip it to the other side now. So those blades have lasted me. Uh, so far, we can just say they, they last a good 18 months, a good set of blades. So poly blades, I know they're expensive, but if you kind of do the math, they're gonna last about 18 months. They're, they're not that expensive. So anyway, that's what we're gonna do now. Flip the blades and then uh, we'll have a new set of blades to put on this uh, slab. 
All right, so let me show you real quick this machine that we have the uh, poly blades attached to. Uh, this is a 10 horsepower motor and uh, we blew this motor up. <laughs> uh, so I just went to Harbor Freight and picked this motor up for not much money. Uh, the problem that we're having obviously is the uh, centrifugal clutches. They really put a lot of strain on the engines. So what I did is I put a CVT clutch on this one and most of my trial machines. So the CVT clutches, they really help a lot because it, it really widens your range of speed on your blades and it gives you a lot more torque. So as you guys see, we run the uh, floating pans a lot. So that puts a lot of stress on the, uh, on the trial machines. So the CVT really helps in the sense that It'll give you a lot more torque on the low end, but then once you pull the uh, pan off, then you have a lot of high RPM on your blades for uh, burnishing your slab. So uh, this is really a game changer for us. So once you do the CVT conversion, you'll wonder why <laughs> you were running centrifugal clutches, because that's really the way to go. So here's another very important step. That is where the overhead door is going to come down and close. So you have to make sure that you screed it with a straight edge to make sure you don't have any waves or any dips. Otherwise, you're gonna have some daylight under your door and it's not gonna sit flat against the concrete. So as you can see here, he is panning perpendicular to the first pass. That's what you always wanna do. You always wanna cross your passes perpendicular to each other. Again, if you do not do this, you're gonna get waves on your concrete. You can tell how much better it's looking now that it's giving it the second pass. Uh, more moisture has left the concrete, so therefore the concrete is going to start laying a lot flatter pass after pass. Uh, this is probably the last pass we're going to give it with a pan. After this we're going to pull off the pan and uh, use the combination blades. Then we're going to hit it with the combination blades the same manner. You have to cross perpendicular to each other. Once we do that we'll come back and just uh, finish it off with the finishing blades. Concrete's all about timing. If you notice here, the slab has just enough moisture to where the uh, pan doesn't require additional water, but it's also not so dry that the pan will not dig into the concrete. If you hit it just right, it's gonna go smooth. If you fall behind, you're gonna have a bad day. All right, so as you guys can see, this slab is almost done. You can see we have two trial machines on there. One running with combination blades and the other one with the poly blades. So as you guys saw when we were running the, uh, the trial machine with the combination blades and the one with the poly blades, this is where the CBT clutches really come in handy. You saw the combination blade trial machine, he was really spinning those blades. Where the uh, poly blades, you can see he's going really slow right now. Uh, obviously he can speed it up a lot more if he needed to but at this point he doesn't need to. They were spinning the uh, combination blades real fast to bring up more moisture and therefore we don't have to spin the uh, poly blade so fast. Again, if we needed to, he could, but at this point he doesn't have to. So after we're done with the foundation, we'll pull some hoses out here, put a sprinkler on it because it's gonna get pretty hot today. You do want to water cure your concrete if possible because concrete, uh, even though it's dry or it's set, it's not done curing. It needs moisture to uh, set up. So uh, especially like today it's going to get up to about 90 degrees so and it's starting to get windy. That wind will suck the moisture right out of the concrete. So we'll get it done here shortly and then we'll put a sprinkler on it and wet it down which uh, is going to make sure that we don't have, well it's not going to make sure but it's going to give us the best possible chance of not having surface cracks. So notice the pattern that is doing. This is the pass that he just made and he'll put another pass right here going that way. On the way back, you want to overlap those two passes, okay? So you kind of do figure eights all the way back. And obviously, obviously you always want to be walking back. <laughs> you don't ever, you know, that'll cover your footprints and everything. Notice the mirror finish that the uh, poly blades put on that concrete. You can tell the reflection on the concrete once the machine goes by. Now here's something that you really need to be careful about. See the scream down here? That was left behind when we picked up the trial machine. So you need to make sure 
you remove the travel machine but you have to come back and hand travel this or else it's gonna dry right on the surface and pretty much ruin the entire slab because the customer's gonna show up he's gonna walk up and that's the only thing he's gonna see he's gonna miss how perfect how perfectly square the slab is he's gonna miss how level it is he's gonna miss the entire uh, beautiful finish on the slab this is the only thing they're going to focus on so make sure you clean that up before you do anything else uh, you can still see the mark right now but that's once it dries it'll be gone there's really no more concrete on it here I'll do this and it'll go away again be very careful with little things like that just because like I said you can ruin a perfectly good job by simply leaving that there all right so there you have it 30 by 40 slab done we're gonna leave the forms on we're gonna come back tomorrow pull them off and then plaster the slab the uh, customer is going to put a sprinkler there at 2 p.m. he's got it right here and I told him right now it's still a little too green uh, that's what we call concrete when it's not completely dry uh, so it's a little too green right now to get on it and put a sprinkler on it uh, however couple more hours the sun's really gonna start beating on it I told him go ahead and put a sprinkler on it for a couple of hours just make sure the slab gets nice and wet and do that for about the next seven days every day you really want that concrete to have some water because concrete needs water to set okay so the more water you give it the better it is concrete will actually set up underwater for example if you're pouring concrete and it starts to rain don't think it's not gonna set up it is gonna set up so anyway, this lab is done and we're going to the next job site. I'm Eric and we are Texas Barnuminiums. See you next time.